specifically we'll talk about ARI. Now, ARI is the Automated Robot Integration Explorer. It does many things. When I say ARI does many things, that includes behind the scenes, doing the OCR on the server. It includes merging documents together. It includes splitting documents apart. So it does more than just filing of documents. But at this moment, or I should say in this class, what we're going to discuss is the way that the system can file documents. Now, I want to talk about how you might think to file documents today, because here's what Pinpoint can have ARI do. Documents can be filed by basically the name of the file, like this. I have a file, and this is actually going to be, or is, and I'll explain this later, what we refer to as a named file. But basically, based on the name of the file, it's going to file it in a location. I want to talk about this as well. Now, this doesn't have any interface fields or screens, but let's take an example. I'm going to go in here and look at my cases that I have. So I have, let's see, I'm, I apologize. I have uh, some Dropbox running in the background, catching up to do a couple of examples for loading virtually. In any case, you'll notice that I have these four clients, or I'm sorry, cases, whatever you'd like to refer to them as. If I go in here for just a moment, I want to go under admin, under setup, cabinet type. Now, if I look at the file for cases, I apologize, the cabinet for cases, you're going to notice that I have fields, case number, name of person, county, which is a drop down box, and attorney. So, what I have is I exported out of my whatever system, doesn't matter. I exported out all of my cases, for example. So I'm just going to open this up in Excel for a moment and show it to you. You will notice that I have a list of cases here. Uh, different cases, name of person, county because it's a drop down. Long story short, you might want to leave it blank, but it's based on a relative displacement. So if you have three counties in there and the first one is that was put in was DuPage and the second one was whatever, I can use values or numbers. But for drop downs, basically, I normally will just leave this all blank. But here's the important part. The fields that you see right here must match the way that you have. Let's split this in half. The way that you have these fields is the exact order in which I want to have, and I'm still stretching it out there. I want to have these fields down here, which are case number, name of person, county, and attorney, and have them in a spreadsheet. Now, if you have a date column field in here, you must call it, is it date field, Rick? Yep, date field. So if there was a fifth field here that was a date, make sure your heading is date field. Even if you have three dates, they always need to say date space field so that it knows that it's a true date. So it you know do, does its algorithm the way it stores actual relative days or dates. So watch this though. If you remember- uh, One other one, Pat, a uh, checkbox. If you have a checkbox field for, basically if it's a yes, you're checking it, you put a one. If you're not checking the box, you'd put a zero. Correct. So on a checkbox, one means you've checked it, zero means you haven't checked it. So in this case, though, I'm going to close this file here and move this out of the way. And one of the things that I have or you have is you'll have a folder. And if you don't, just ask for it, meaning that if you're on the cloud. But I have one that is called folder. And a long story short, ARI is defined automatically to look in a folder that is actually going to look at your cabinet names. See my cabinet name here, Cases? If I had this called Case and I don't have a cabinet by that name, it would not file it. So in your set of folders, there is actually a folder that's called Folder. And what it does is it creates those. 
So what I'm gonna do is I made shortcuts for these for this evening, just so I could just drag them over. But if you look in this, um, I have a set of documents. Where'd my, oh, here it is, I'm sorry. Oops, I can't get something out of the way here. And just as an example here, I had some saved. But right now, if I just take, uh, sorry, that's the named one, I apologize. Uh, load folders, here it is, I apologize. So I have one called folders on my system. And once again, this is something that Aerie automatically creates for you. So just to be aware of, Aerie automatically created already for you a folder on your server, or if you're on the cloud, ask us. We'll tell you what the name of that folder is. And if you want, you could do things like this. So assume that I exported all of my cases out of some other system. I just put them into that folder. And again, I hate to keep saying the folder name is folder, but it is. And what'll happen is, as long as there is a cabinet by that exact name, not the XLS obviously, but as long as there's a cabinet by that name, it will automatically create those cases. So what's in the process of happening right now is Aerie is sleeping and we're on the play system. So we have our timer set for every two minutes it wakes up uh, and that was within the two minutes. So watch what happens now. If I go in here and I'm gonna be in my user mode now, so I'm gonna go in and look at my cases in here so I'm going to switch to cases. And so notice all my new cases, the 1600 ones. So what it's done is it loaded up those folders for me, ready to go. Okay, the important thing, columns have to match. So remember I put in a one, well, the, obviously the equivalent of one uh, in the system was based on you know the values in here, for example. So in any case, what you'll notice here is I've populated my particular folders. Now, any questions on that? Okay, let's go on to another airy step. Again, yeah, I have, this, is, this is Kathy, I have a question. Sure, so Kathy. I type all that into an Excel spreadsheet so I can save typing it in again. Yeah, but normally I wouldn't type it in. Like, let's say you have in your accounting system you could just go into your accounting system and go, like right now I could go in and say, customers export and it'll create that spreadsheet for me. So I, I mean, if you, if, if the, okay. yeah, if you didn't have them already, then I would just go in yeah. here, I'd go in here and create them because I wouldn't be doing it in the spreadsheet just to load them. It would be more along the concept of, you have a means to get that spreadsheet automatically so that you don't have to type in any location. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. So not the reason you have to, Kathy, though. A user can create a folder in many places. I could have manually typed these in right into the system. So this was just purely an automation process. Okay. Okay. So let's go on to the next then. Under admin, Aerie. That's where we're going to concentrate this evening. Okay. Now, I'm going to just jump down to a few different ones, so I'm going to jump around here a little bit. But I wanted to mention to you that there are basically, what you see here, there are basically six ways to load documents automatically into the system via Aerie and what you can, as an administrator, build right here. You're seeing three of them, and we're going to talk about them, but one of them is called direct, one is called named, one is called batch, and there are three different modes in the distribution rule that we'll talk about shortly. But let's start out first by looking at some very easy and obvious things that I might want to do. Let's say that in my email, where is my email? I have to drag it over here, guys. Sorry, just a second. Okay, so let's say, you know, I'm on a particular document here or wherever, you know, I don't wanna go in there and play a trailer. Um, I'll just pick on this. Okay, so one of the things you'll remember is in here, I could 
hit a button and save the document and the attachment directly into Pinpoint. So where do I want to file it? Let's take an example. I'm going to simulate this, but let's say that I have documents that I receive that I want to file directly into my personal folder. In Pinpoint, I don't know if people have, uh, you guys have or not, but we have, for example, what we call staff cabinets. And I have uh, access to my, cap, my folder. I don't have access to the other ones, as an example. Maybe I do, maybe I don't, but in this, question, in this point, I don't. Because I want all of my stuff to come in here, okay? In other words, if I've got some quick things to put in the system, I've got a folder called my personal stuff, and maybe I just wanted to file, you know, a couple of things. So maybe I wanted to take this document and file it in, and I want it no matter what, no matter what, anything at all that I put in this folder is always, always going to end up in my personal folder here. And it'll be a moment until maybe, but in a moment, you know, when I look at this, we'll be able to see um, additional um, uh, documents as soon as that gets loaded. So in other words, what you'll notice is if I open this in here, oh, the folder's gone now, so it might've gotten it already. Um, and I'm gonna go back in, oops. So if I go in here and take a look at this, you'll notice there's another document in here because it didn't matter what it said, didn't matter what the title was. I just simply said, hey, put it in here. So take that example in my email. If you want to, and this is, I won't mention this in Airy uh, class because we do have a video and things, but when you set these up, notice I have a path. So I could set a path that would go right to my folder that I had defined just a moment ago. Right here, that if anything goes in there, I want it to automatically go into my folder. Let's look at how I set that up. In Airy, I'm going to go to what we call Airy Direct Rules. Okay, now I want to mention this First and foremost, be so careful because this path is where it is on the server. This is not my D drive. If you put in what you think is your drive or an invalid path, your air log will stack up. So if you're on the cloud, just ask us if you don't have one already, because once you get a folder called direct, you can then create as many folders as you want. This one's for him, this one's for her, and so forth. So in other words, just ask us the path. So here's what happens though. I want to create something right now that automatically, when it goes into this folder, and I'm just going to click to do that, I'm going to bring up the one that I just brought, uh, did here. I think I am. So let's take a look at what I built. I said in your server and on the server, this is the path to where my documents go. When I drag them here to this folder right here, what's happening is they are going to the server through a virtual server, meaning like in this case, Dropbox. So if I was local or in the office, meaning that you might have shortcuts that you set up for your staff that are just local to your server. In other words, you don't need a virtual server. But for example, if I'm at home and the cloud is obviously out there, or if you have self-host and I'm at home tonight and not at the office. So when I drag that file over here, what happened is Aerie woke up saw that there was activity in one of the folders it was defined to. And when I say it was defined to, it was defined right here. So when Airy woke up, it went out to the server's D drive and looked in this folder and it said, is there anything there? And if there was, it simply did this. It said, I'm gonna put it in the staff cabinet. This one's for Pat Caruso and I'll put it in as a paper document. 
Now, as an administrator, maybe I would create another rule here. In other words, now I'm going to create one for a different staff member. And so that one might be stuff for Sue Smith. And Sue might have a shortcut on her desk that anything she puts in there will automatically file. Okay, so far? So direct is a way that you can, and you could have as many direct folders as you want, but it is a one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning that if you put a document in, it's always going into that same cabinet, folder, subdivider as that type of document. Okay, so that's how you can create direct. I wanted to mention a couple fields here. These are obvious though, what document type, what cabinet, what folder you want it to go into, the path of the server, and you could see these asterisks. Now, there are some optional fields. Do you want the system, I'm sorry, system, to use workflow business rules to see if the document should go different paths, meaning that if I already have a workflow set up, if you remember in document types under the administrative class, under the document type paper documents, if I have a workflow already, that's great. But if I want, whether I do or don't, if I wanted to check for workflow business rules based on information within the metadata, then I can set this. Now, how am I going to get metadata into fields to be checked for a business rule because I'm letting the system file this automatically? Airy has what we call template processing. Template processing would be where you can actually train the system to select zones on a document and correspond that zone on the file document to a field in your metadata. Should I repeat that statement? Okay, so it's not needed, but I wanted to point out what that was and what this is. Form prefix, I don't really use this anymore. I used to use it a lot more before we had what we did the other night called variable naming. But in here, form prefix would be, for example, that every document that came in, if I wanted to put, I'm making this up, XYZ dash as the first part of the file name, then what it will do is it'll put XYZ and then keep the name of the file. This form prefix will override your variable naming. So if even though you have variable naming set possibly on these document types, the form prefix is going to override that. So I don't really use that though, um, to be honest with you, but it's there. So I can build as many of these direct rules as I want. When I save them, they're part of the routine. The system's gonna go in and start looking for anything there. Once again, using a direct rule, it's a one-to-one, -one, meaning that anything you put into that folder outside of the system is going to go to a folder specifically with inside the system. Okay. Airy, we're going to go to named. Now, I created a name. I'm going to go back in here for just a moment. I'm going to go in as a user, and I want to look up my customers. I'm opening it in a new tab so I can come back to the screen in just a moment though. So I'm in here and I'm gonna say customers. There they are, customer, I'm sorry. Okay, now here is an extremely important thing to remember if you're going to use named. I'm going to open up one other screen first, and I'm gonna go back to where I built this cabinet. So I'm gonna go under Admin, Setup, Cabinet Type. Under here, I'm going to open the cabinet type called Customer that I've built. Now, here's the fields, as you notice, for those particular um, field names, folder field names. This is critical. If you'll notice, I'm going to change this for one moment here. I'm going to change this to customer number. And by the way, 
if you make a field, a folder field, you can only make one. If I pick more than one, I'll get an error message. If I don't pick required, it's gonna make it required. So I told you before that um, if you go into the system right now, before I save this, I'm gonna do one more thing. Before I save this, I'm gonna go in and browse folders. And I forgot to right mouse click and save that last tab, so I apologize. But watch this, when I go in here and I pick customer, Look at the what I see for the folder names, the folder, uh, the vendor, I'm sorry, the customer names. Okay, now if I go back in here and I change it to say customer number instead, what will happen is if I save and exit this, now if I go back in here and I'm just gonna close it and reopen it, it's now by the uh, customer number. So that is one thing that this field is used for and that is so that it displays that field the second part of this is if you use named files i have a file in here that i want to put in called granger that's the actual customer name but if i were to just drag that over to a folder that i've called named and i'll explain what that means shortly it's going to look under this, and based on the fact that I have selected customer this, it would never work. In other words, I'd have to rename the file the customer number. I'm gonna change this back, because I did save it, that's right. So, I'm changing back to customer name, and I'm going to save it. Now, when I go into the system, and I'm gonna go back in to look at those uh, customer uh, file, and select customer. You'll notice that now I have, you know, Granger as the as a uh, I'm sorry, as a um, customer name. So, I could I'm just going to open this. I have three different folders here. If I wanted to file a customer document because I know that's the customer name, I could just drag it and put it into the customer and let it go. Because Shortly, you'll see this will disappear. In other words, I set up these so that I could even put in employee documents based on maybe employee name or whatever, or file vendors. So I kind of have these three subdividers in here. But if you notice, um, it might, I don't know if it's gone yet, it still says working on it. Maybe it's in the process of working on it or doing its thing. Kind of refresh it back and go in. Yeah, so it's gone. So in any case, if I go into the system now, and I uh, select, I'm gonna do a search again. If I select Granger, um, I'm gonna put today's date. I, oh, well, it's probably right, let's see, today's date. Okay, so there it is. Now, I had it renamed it with the date and uh, time on it. That was just a variable rule. But see what it did? Based on the name of the file, and even though it's renamed it, it said, I know you have a customer by that name. Here is something else to remember. I'm going to take um, and make one more file here. And I'm going to take this and copy it and paste it. OK, I'm going to save this again. But this time, I misspelled it. I'm going to just add an E there. And I file it. Okay, so we'll wait a minute and see the outcome of that. But I just accidentally typed in an incorrect customer name. The consequence to that will be obvious and evident. Oops, I keep going for my email, I apologize. Um... I've created a new folder because I misspelled it and I'm starting to accumulate those documents. So nice if that's what I wanted to do. I literally created a folder on the fly, but if you use named and you mistype the name, that's what will happen. Okay, so let's look at how I built that rule.
I'm going to go in under admin and area again and go down to named. And under named, I happen to have that one rule I've created. Once again, critical, this is the path that is on the server, not my workstation. Okay, because if you notice on my workstation, it was just on the desktop. So what I did was I said when a document comes in for customers, that's where I filed it to. Remember, I had customer. I have another one, employee and vendor. So I said, it's going to go to the customer um, cabinet. So it went out and said, OK, what is his folder field? And I had customer name checked. So it looked to see if there was a match. As long as there was a match, it created it. If there was not a match, it did not. Same thing here. If you wanted to start up a workflow, maybe you want to grab some of the metadata fields for the document as they are put, are put in. And you could also say use workflow business rule. OK, so that was a named rule. Any questions on that yet? OK, I'm going to just kind of knock this first one off. Airy Q. I can go in as long as I'm an administrator and look at the queue of what's waiting to be done. In fact, if I dragged a document over now and kept checking, I would see that it would be in the process of possibly creating a viewable image, OCRing the document. In fact, not that I would ever go back to really look, but if I wanted to, I could say maybe for today, I want to see all the documents that had success. And I can see all of the things that had taken place and at what time. So, you know, here's some things that it OCR that document for me. Remember, I dragged one in there. Here's Granger. It OCR it. And somewhere in here, I'll see that it created a variable name and it made a viewable image of the work of the word file. So not that this is a lot of good reading here, but I can see what's been taking place from Airy. The thing I look for, obviously, would be more along the lines of what's in the queue, you know, and find out what's waiting to be done or maybe what failed. And there could be reasons that it really didn't fail anything and this one didn't. But it would show that like if it couldn't OCR the document because <coughs> maybe it was a video file or something. And so it would show those type of things. OK, so that was an easy one just to get out of the way. Uh, admin again, Airy. I'm going to skip batch for the moment and go right to distribution rules. Now, let's talk about distribution rules for a moment. I'm going to, before I go in, I'm going to take a couple of examples here. Now, let's say that somebody walked over to the scanner for this example or directly out of your accounting system. They actually, and I did this intentionally though, I, instead of just having just one set of documents, because as you'll notice, page one, is to this particular client, this statement number. Page two is this client, this statement number. Page four, I'm, I'm sorry, page three there, is this client, this statement number. And page two that's mixed in here because somebody just scanned in all the documents today, mixed in a uh, Office Max statement. Okay, so that's the four pages that are in here. Now, those happened to be all one page documents. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to move the ones out of the way that I have, and I'm going to distinguish three types of folders. What we call native, what we call single, and another one we call multiple, and I forgot to create a shortcut here. So let me explain the difference between single, native, and multiple. First off, here is a document that every page, even though they were different, were single page. They were four pages and they were all individual, meaning I don't need to put any page separators. If my intent was to just file all of these as single pages, so if I have 55 pages here, I'm going to end up with 55 documents all one page long. So I just put it in here. And what happens now is the system is going to see that file and it says this is going in to a single process. So it is going to take each page as its own document. Okay, I'll just leave that there for a moment. 
Um, I've done demos today already, so I already have these in there, but I want to wait till it pulls it in so I can show it to you. So right now, think about this. I have documents that I am creating or scanning. And if those are multiple pages, then meaning that they're multiple pages in the sense that I've got a three page document, I got a 10 page document, whatever. We need to know where do those pages break. I saw that file just disappear and that's okay. I'll come back to it. So you're going to see the word bulk MR. And what it does is this is a separator page. So I start with the separator page here. And then you'll notice, just if you look at the thumbnails here, you'll notice there's a document. And then uh, there's another separator page. So I've got this page. Then I have a separator. Then it has one, two, two pages. And then there's another separator. And it's followed by another page and maybe another couple of documents. So it could be 10 pages, doesn't matter. Bulk MR stands for bulk mailroom. So um, I didn't, uh, give me a second here. I'll just create a shortcut. Okay, so that single document is gone. It was four pages, but it was taken into the system and processed all as individual pages. A multiple document means that I've used a page separator in between each document. Let it go. Okay, so if I was sitting at a network scanner, I might even have it where it, I programmatically set it to um, save it to that folder, and then there it, it's going to go, for example. Let's take one more example. Let's say you have a Word file, or I have one document. In other words, now I have a single document here. I'm going to move this kind of sort of out of the way. And now I want to file it as is. Whether this was a Word file, whether this was any type of file, I could simply say, take the document as a whole, and I want to file it and keep it as one document. I don't want it to split up. That's what native stands for. So you might say this looks kind of complicated, but think about it. If really all I do is I create Word files and I want to save them, or I get a file and I want to file it, I might just have a native folder. Maybe I'm not dealing with these single pages or splitting up documents. I just have a document. I'm just going to drag it into here. And that's the only one I have. So I don't maybe want a personal folder. I don't necessarily need, you know, to do any of these other things. So these, again, are purely up to you, but I was just showing examples of these. I've noticed these documents have disappeared. Now, let's go in and see what's going on. So I'm gonna go into the system before, and I'm gonna hit the search button that I use, and I'm gonna put in, uh, clear this, because I don't want just clients, but I wanna look at all the documents that have come in today. So if I search this, notice what's happened. In here, it's taken even documents and the one that was today's mail, it actually split it up. It actually, if you look at it, it now is only one page. And a lot of you have probably seen this in the presentations I've done, but let's explain what's kind of going on now. So in this document itself, you'll notice that it's only one page long. And at the bottom, it's done a lot of things. Because of the document type, it kicked in a workflow. It renamed the document, but it also even captured metadata information. Here's the 2461, here's the zero dollars. Instead of being called today's invoice or today's mail, it renamed it with a variable name, as you can see here. So where I'm going with this is that I actually took in metadata as well I could have, in this case, had it start up a very, or I'm sorry, a workflow based on maybe the amount, but I just started up a standard workflow. So now you can start to see documents coming in and how it's starting to take and split those up as an example. So, Pat, can I add one thing? Yes. If you stay on this screen here, content search, mm -hmm. one thing that I use, like if I've been filing a lot through native, for example, and like you did, I want to see today's, if you type native in the notes, and also, he also put in the date, so he's looking for today. And then if he puts native in the notes... I'll just single because of those. Right, because watch... Single, the, yeah, single, perfect, yeah. 
Because I search, he's only going to see the documents that went in through that single rule. And the reason why is because if you open a document, thanks for pointing that out, Rick. If you open a document in here, when Airy processes it in the notes, you can always go down to figure out what rule it was used to create it. And so that's where uh, Eric was mentioning. I could do, you know, the word single, for example, and I could find, you know, all the documents that were brought in by Airy single versus, you know, other types of rules maybe that we have. So let's look at the rules for distribution. First and foremost, one of the easiest things for me to ever do is to take a look at my documents. So let's pick on some type of document, like a vendor invoice, okay? I have no idea what a vendor invoice looks like, but I'm gonna go in under Airy, and I'm going to go down to, dist oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go down to distribution rules. So under distribution rules, here's the thing that you've been noticing. When I build a rule, I can build a rule on how to handle it, meaning native, single, or multiple. How does the system know to do these is because there are literally three folders that Airy creates. One is native, just like you saw me drag them in. One was single and one was multiple. So if I drag it in or I want to process a native rule, I'd click native. Let's say that I want to take and create a rule for all of my vendor invoices, and I'm going to assume in this case that I'm not gonna use um, separators. I'm just gonna assume they're one pagers, okay? So I'm gonna make up a rule now, and I'm gonna call this um, uh, payables, because I already have one called uh, invoices. Okay, so here's that document prefix. Don't wanna use that. I've already created the rule type. Now, here's something important to be aware of right here. Priority order. Down here, priority order, it goes lowest to highest. I would recommend not putting them so close, whether you want to separate them by 10 or 20 or whatever, because you'll even notice that I made a rule out here, number 5,000. So it's priority order. So what it does is it goes down the list. So if a document is in the native folder, like in this, I'm sorry, or single folder is what I had before. Let's say it was in the single folder. What will happen is then that when it actually goes through, it goes and it looks at all the rule types that are single. So it doesn't even bother to look at the native. So it's gonna check this one, this one, jump down to that one and so forth. Okay, now I'm gonna redo this again because I left the screen to go to that second screen. So I'm just gonna call this payables invoices. Okay, priority mm -hmm. order, I'll just make it uh, three for now. Okay, active or not. If you make it active, then it's going to be part of the rules that the document system will look for. If you're just kind of building them now and you don't make them active, it's not going to bother doing anything because it's still not active. Document name prefix I mentioned just a moment ago, and I'm going to tell it what folder it's going to hit and how to process it. Keep cover page only is a factor in multiple, and I'll mention that when I get to it. Okay, when the document comes in, here's what I want to do. In this rule number three, I'm going to see if this is a vendor document. So I'm going to select my vendor cabinet here. And now I'm going to start looking for what fields. I can pick what subdivider I want it to go into. You know, if I want it to go into a subdivider for invoices. Now, here, I start to select the fields. Think about this. In my database for vendors, I probably have the vendor name, their address, their phone number, and so forth. So I get a vendor invoice. I start looking at them and I go, you know what? Most of the time I see the vendor's name on there. So I'm gonna start looking for the vendor's name. Now this is a big decision here and an or. I'm gonna say or because here's what I'm going to do. I've scanned in invoices before and it never sees, the OCR doesn't see the vendor name. And I look at the document and maybe one of two things. Maybe the vendor name isn't on there. It's built into a logo of theirs and the OCR isn't picking up a logo because that's you know a picture. Or it just doesn't pick up, or maybe they don't have their name on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of conditions here. Well, if I see the vendor name, or maybe a lot of times at least they have their phone number on there. So I'm gonna add their phone number. And maybe even just you know out of the clear blue, I'll just say once in a blue moon, they put the vendor ID on there. So 
now I have to, I've been, or so it's making my condition a little less complex, meaning I've got to see one of these three. I could use and combinations, but here's what happens. When the system comes in, it's going to first see if this qualifies. If it goes, hey, I got a hit. I got that same phone number. I find it on the document. Here it is. Uh, you know, it matches the database and so forth. Now, if that's all I wanted to do, great. I could say, what type of document do I want to file that away as? And I'm done. But here's my problem. I don't want to file it away as a vendor invoice necessarily um, uh, unless I know it's truly an invoice. Because what if it's a vendor contract or a vendor check or a vendor chargeback or this or that? So I want to qualify this more. I'm going to add some words here. I'm going to say I have to see the word invoice. And again, I'm going to say or, not not, not or, but, or not and, but or. Or the word, I would actually say invoice, not invoices, my mistake. So I'm going to look for invoice or maybe statement. Maybe sometimes, you know, they don't say the word invoice, so they say statement. Great. I'm ready to go. So what would happen is if this qualified, it would go down here and it goes, yep, I see the word invoice or statement. So I know who it is. I know what type of document it is. I know where you want to put it in that particular vendor. And now it will maybe start up a workflow or whatever. Okay, so this rule would work great and it would separate the documents. Now, take this example. What if you're just going to start putting in vendor invoices when they come in? You know, like I got one, put it in, got one, put it in. I could make this rule a native. I might have this rule twice. I have to change the name. I might have payables invoices single, and I might have another one called payables invoice um, native. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a copy for the rules today, but that's coming soon. But let's say this was a native rule. Then all I'm going to do is drag a and by the way, now an invoice could be 10 pages long because I'm saying that when I put it in, keep the document intact, keep it together. If I'm going to start scanning it in with stacks of documents, I might create a rule for multiple. Now, if you pick multiple, here's the difference. You can tell it to keep the cover page or not. What does that mean? Well, first of all, I'm going to go back here for a moment. And uh, did I? Do that. Oh, I did do that document already. I'll have a copy of it in here anyway. Um, that one didn't fail, so it did take it. So I'm going to open up one in here. There it is. Okay. So here's what happened. Got to page one. You have to start with a bulk MR. Now, look what happens here. Sorry. If you pick multiple, do you want to keep the cover page or not? What does that mean? Well, in my case, I do not want to keep the cover page, meaning that it is not the index fields on this document. All I want is to know that this document is starting now. And by me saying, don't keep the cover page, it's going to toss this page out and start right here. And then it will go on and it goes, okay, I got that one. Oh, and then there's another one. So it separates the page. There goes one page. There goes a second page. There and there goes another one. So each time it hits bulk MR, it says, okay, don't keep the cover page. Now, some of your rules, let's say these are vendor invoices or customer checks. Uh, I'm sorry, customer checks, um, vendor checks or customer invoices or anything to that effect. One of the things you might do is, I'm going to just take an example here. Let's say this is the document and it has all the information on it. If I could, I could print the word bulk MR on here. And then I would say keep cover page because what it's going to do is it's going to pick up the document, know where to do. And so how am I going to get bulk MR on this page? Well, when I print it off things out of my system, I can add the word bulk MR like in the bottom note. It doesn't have to be in the top if I wanted to. I could scan in a big stack of documents without bulk MR. I made, I made a stamp for, called bulk MR. So I could go in here and start stamping this going, okay, I want to separate it there. Uh, yep, yep, I got to separate it here. So I have some space down here. So I'm stamping the word bulk MR. Now, 
I would say in pinpoint, keep the cover page because it sees bulk MR and it goes, keep the cover page, meaning stay on this page to look at what you're getting or what you're doing so it can file it based on that. Okay, so if I have the ability or, you know, through my software to put a, you know, word bulk MR on the first page of each new document as an example, then I could do something like this and say keep cover page. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, I've got a few minutes here. I wanted to spend on one more thing here, and that is merging documents together. Let's say I receive vendor invoices or purchase orders, and I want to start watching documents. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if I see a vendor statement and so forth, blah, 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 if I see any documents, and this is for merging, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pick like purchase. I think I have PO number. If, and I'll say just that's all. I don't need any more. So it's going to find the document. It knows it's an invoice. If it sees you have a document already in the system with a metadata field of that PO number, it's going to glue on to the back of that document. So you don't have to merge it manually. So this field, and again, just try it. Don't go, you know, obviously throwing in a thousand documents and goes, go, you know, you, you experiment with it. So here, by adding that field, now instead of creating a new document, I'm actually just in, uh, merging onto the back of an existing one if there's a PO number that matches. If not, then it's not, gonna, it's not going to uh, merge because there's nothing to merge with. Okay. You've noticed up here that I have something with a template. If you remember when I put in that document called Today's Mail, three of those documents actually extracted the metadata from the document because I created a template. To create a template in the system, you go under Menu, Admin, Setup, and template. But before I go on, a template simply means, and I'm going to show you an example here, here's that document and what the system is doing is it's capturing, let's see, what is it capturing? The statement number. So I trained the system to take that spot and the dollar amount. Obviously I'm not going in tight, I want to give it space in case it's a bigger number. Okay, so what I did was I set it up up here that I'll show you how to build one in just a moment. But as an example, um, what I'm going to do is kind of capture a screen real quick for myself here, just so I have this as a reference point when I'm doing this. Okay, so what I did though was here, I created one and then you have to give it the XY coordinates of that location. So a starting X point and an ending X point and a starting Y and an ending Y. Here's how to create one. I'm going to just kind of create one from scratch here. So I'm going to get out of this. <clears throat> I don't need to save anything. Okay, so first things first. This is a little document you might want to even print off first because it's the instructions of what to do like how to set the grid and, you know, pick your, I'm sorry, and uh, just a quick one pager, but I already remember it, so I don't need that at the moment. But here's what I do. I'm gonna decide what type of document this is. Okay, this is gonna be a customer invoice. Okay, so I've selected, you know, the type of document that I want it to be. When I select if it's a customer invoice, then I have to create two other fields before I could go on. For this document type, I'm gonna give it a name. I'll just call it, uh, you know, cuss billing. Okay, and then here's my tab. You know, where do you want to put it? You might have a tab called all, which is normally what I do, but you only set up these three fields, the document type, the template name, and the document tab, and hit the save key. Now, it's created that one, as you can see, I called it customer billing, or cuss billing, there it is. Now, what I normally do is I'm going to go, and this is step number two, I'm going to bring in a document so I can look at it. It must be a PDF, 
So if it's not a PDF, bring it in as a PDF, um, you know, or make it a PDF, for example. And I'm just going to grab something here, even though it's not a customer thing, uh, obviously. So I'm going to add that so I can see it. Okay, now. I can start picking fields. Now for customer billing, I only have three fields or, oh, I, I have more, I'm sorry for this one. I thought I did uh, only had one or two. So now I could start figuring out what I wanna do. So the first field, let's pretend I have name of doctor. So I wanna grab that area. So I would go in here and I would say, uh, again, let's pretend this is it. Uh, let's say salesperson is this field here. So now, First of all, I can either give it the XY coordinates of where to grab on the document, or I could just put in static text means every time it comes in, always put in this same word every time as under this, under this field. But if I wanted to, I'm going to go into the system. I'm right mouse clicking on the system. Uh, I need to bring up the menu here, uh, menu bar. And under here, you will notice that you can, um, is it under edit? I'm sorry, here yes, it is. Under edit. Yes. Thank you, Rick. Under edit preferences, you will notice that there is a measurement tool. Under the measurement tool, I change this to points. Now, the only thing I really do too is I click to show the grid line so I can see those, and I apply that. Now, when I close I that. Pat, don't you uncheck you snapping? Uh, it doesn't matter. Sure. All I'm okay, doing is looking better. at the point, yeah. Gotcha. But what I do at this point is a lot of times I zoom in a little bit if I wanted to. And then I'm going to ch add another little menu here. Um, it is the standard toolbar because I like the little hand here because I don't want to draw any more boxes. Using the hand, I can scoot things around. <coughs> so I might do something like this where now I can see the X, Y coordinate if this is where I was going to go. <coughs> Excuse me. Is here's This is the X, Y, right, Rick? So, uh, so X is across. So right here, these are in six points. So I always kind of average it if I'm about 385. So I would say the starting uh, point would be 385. <coughs> Excuse me. The ending X point would be way out here at about 570. <coughs> and I do the same thing for the Y coordinates. So I have the starting Y coordinate of about 70 or about 68. And where I got that number was I just literally saw right here. And the ending Y is 72, about 82. <coughs> So I've got that field, and you could see I could create more fields. Maybe I want to put um, uh, customer info as you know new invoice every time. So I can do things like that too that are just going to be text. Now, if I was done, I would save this document. Oh, sorry, I already created it, so I'm done, so I don't have any more fields. So I'm all done, and now I have this new one called customer cusp billing. And these are the fields for it. And you can see, you know, where I'm grabbing and so forth. So if I was in rules now or anywhere you notice that, if I go back under Airy, you'll notice that I'll just pick one that I have already. Um, here I can select a template. So the one I just created was cusp billing. So that means when the document comes in or any place you saw me using template where it was in named or direct, that's where you could use it. And what it will do is fill in the metadata for you as well. Okay, so you gotta play with that a little bit too, um, but there is the videos on that as well. So um, hopefully that's helpful. I wanted to point out the one last one really quick and that's batch. Under batch, I notice that a really good thing or a good way to use this is that you have to give it a batch indicator. And where I've seen this work really well is, for example, that you generate a lot of reports. And maybe these are departmental reports. 
And at the start of each new department at the top heading, you know, maybe this is a trial balance for, uh, you know, your facility. And it comes out and it's department 4210, you know, department IT. And then it's got seven pages of, you know, your expenditures and things. And then it's got department 4830 uh, admissions. And then there's a report and so forth. I could go in and create a rule. So what I'm going to do is if uh, I put in here, and say, for example, the batch indicator is going to be 4210, then I'll create a rule and say this is part of a report or whatever, and then I'll save this. Then I would create another rule that's for 4220, for example. And so what I can do is actually break up depart, I'm sorry, break up reports that are together just by seeing an indicator. So these batch indicators, I mean, literally, I could say anytime you see the word Goldberg, create a new document for it or break it up into a batch. So these are keywords that you can put. And remember, I might even, instead of creating a bulk MR, I could use the batch cover, but I don't think I'd wanna set up a rule for every single name that I have here. But let's say I have 20 departments. I could just put on the cover page, you know, hey, department 4210, let it go and the batch will see that and file the document. So batch is somewhat useful to me if you have a report that's coming into the system that has information on it that you can break it up by that doesn't exceed more than like 20 key fields like if i have more than 20 departments i'm just going to use the distribution rules and let the thing break it up because i could just do it that way but what's nice about this is i don't need to put page separators in there because the batch cover word is the key to essentially a separator, okay? With that, I'll ask if there's any questions that I can answer. Okay, that was a lot to cover. Um, obviously, to play with the system, uh, you know, also uh, one of the things that I do all the time is if I notice documents just don't seem to be getting into the system right, I'll just even import it like into a little area for myself. And then I'll go in and I'll do something like this. So let's say a document's not filing, uh, it's failing and I can't figure out why. It looks like everything's fine with it. So a lot of times what I'll do is let's say I have that document or I drag it into a place. I'll go in and I'll look at the OCR and I'll go, you know what? No wonder it's not picking up the company name. Uh, or whatever. So this is really key to me to see like that's why it didn't see it, you know, it whatever. Or it was close to a logo and it didn't pick up that name. So um, any case, you know, a lot of times lines will throw it off. Like here must be a line somewhere that hit, um, you know, it's got that little code. So it threw it off instead of 070914. It probably let it, thought it was an O. So those little things obviously will throw it a completely awry but you need to at least be able to debug or decipher those, okay? Okay, well, thank you everybody um, for this evening. Uh, our classes go back to day classes again um, in March. Uh, there's a lot of classes offered as well, including these classes. So thanks everyone, have a good evening.